When it's time to change the motor oil in your vehicle, you've probably noticed that some motor oils claim to last 5,000 miles, others 10,000, and then 20,000. Is there really a big difference? Well, let's find out. We'll see which oil flows best when the oil is extremely cold. Then we'll see which oil offers the best protection against engine wear. We'll compare the oils to see which is best at resisting thermal breakdown and evaporation. Then we'll look at the oil test report for each of the oils to see how they compare. Fuel contamination in the motor oil is very common in modern vehicles. So we'll see how the best motor oil performs when it becomes contaminated with fuel. Let's go ahead and send off the oil to an oil testing lab. The oil lab will provide us a lot of great information regarding the oil's anti-wear additive package, detergent and dispersant content, as well as the oil's total base number or the ability of the oil to resist becoming acidic over time. By the way, I always shake oil containers before sending off oil samples for testing since part of the oil additive package may actually fall out of suspension and settle at the bottom of the container. Synthetic oil is supposed to flow better compared to conventional oil or a synthetic blend when it's cold so that moving parts begin getting lubricated sooner. I'll go ahead and place a new oil in a freezer that's set to minus 40 degrees degrees Fahrenheit and we'll leave the oil in the freezer for 24 hours. The blue plastic oil containers look exactly the same and probably came from the same factory. Are they really any different? Let's first compare the oil that's supposed to last for 5,000 miles against the oil that's supposed to last for 10,000 miles. At a price of $18 for a 5-quart container is this SuperTech 5,000 mile oil. All the oils we'll be testing are SAE 5W30. The oil rated for 10,000 miles costs $4 more for a 5-quart container. The SuperTech 5,000 mile oil is a synthetic blend. Instead of being a synthetic blend, the 10,000 mile is a full synthetic. Both the oils are API SP and ILSAC GF6A. If you drive GM vehicles, the 5,000 mile oil does not have the DEXO certification, but the 10,000 mile oil does. Compared to the 5,000 mile oil, SuperTech gives the 10,000 mile oil two stars instead of one in every category. Motor oil definitely needs to be able to handle high engine temperature. So let's see how the oils stack up against each other in the first test. Let's first compare the 5,000 mile oil against the 10,000. I'll first measure out 200 grams of oil into each of the oil containers. Then I'll crank up the heat to around 440 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours. I'll rotate the oil containers every 10 minutes just in case one burner is hotter than the other. It's very close but there does seem to be more vapor coming out of the synthetic blend oil container. The test for this is a NOAC volatility test. It's an ASTM test which exposes oil to a lot more heat than this test to simulate engine operating conditions around the upper piston ring area of an engine. High quality oils resist evaporation and thermal breakdown. At the end of this test, we'll find out how much evaporation has occurred with each oil. Then we'll use the cooked oil for additional testing to see which oil is the best. Once the oil is cooled off, we'll weigh each of the containers to see how much evaporative loss occurred with each oil. The 5,000 mile oil container started out weighing 394.59 grams and it now weighs 377.58, a loss of 17.01 grams. The 10,000 mile oil container started out weighing 429.82 grams and it now weighs 415.0 07, a loss of 14.75 grams. So the 10,000 mile oil did a lot better by experiencing about 14% less thermal evaporation than the 5,000 mile oil. Let's test the lubricity or the film strength of the SuperTech 5,000 mile oil against the 10,000 mile. We'll begin by adding 40 milliliters of oil that's been exposed to heat into the test cups. I'll coat the test wheel in the test pin in motor oil to avoid damage from a dry start. After the test, we'll compare the size of the wear scars of the bearings to determine which oil provides the best film strength. While this test doesn't simulate engine operating conditions perfectly, it'll definitely provide us with some great information. Between each test, I'll use brake parts cleaner to clean the test equipment and then use sandpaper to resurface the test wheel. Let's test the full synthetic 10,000 mile oil next. There definitely seems to be less friction with the 10,000 mile oil. The watt meter is showing less energy usage and the number is dropping quickly. And the test is finished, so let's go ahead and compare the size of the wear scar for each oil. I used the microscope with my calipers to get an accurate measurement. And the test pin for the 10,000 mile oil has a 4% smaller wear scar than the 5,000 mile oil. So the 10,000 mile full synthetic motor oil does indeed provide better wear protection. Before we compare the high mileage 10,000 oil to the 20,000 mile oil, let's first see how the oils flow at minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And the oils are arranged from the lowest rated miles to the highest with 5,000 on the left and 20,000 on the right. And it's very close, but the 10,000 mile high mileage oil barely edges out to 10,000 mile full synthetic. And the full synthetic is not giving up and the 10,000 mile oil takes the lead from the high mileage oil. And the 5,000 and the 20,000 mile oils are very close to the same speed and both are trailing the 10,000 mile oils. And all the oils are gaining speed as they head down the track, but the 10,000 mile oil is really gaining momentum. And it's the 10,000 mile oil for the win, followed by the high mileage oil. And the most expensive oil, the 20,000 mile oil, barely finishes ahead of the synthetic blend. What a race! Let's compare the SuperTech high mileage 10,000 oil against the 20,000. For a 5 quart jug, the high mileage 10,000 mile oil cost around $22 compared to around $26 for the 20,000 mile oil. They both have the same API and ILSAC rating as the two previous oils. 
And both of these oils also have the same DEXO certification. And Supertech gave the 20,000 mile oil more stars for wear protection and combating sludge. Let's compare the evaporative loss of the high mileage against the 20,000 mile oil. And both oils seem to be putting off about the same amount of vapor and it's very close. And the oil was rotated every 10 minutes for two hours and the two hours is finally up. With 200 grams of oil in the container, the high mileage oil started out at 404.69 grams and it now weighs 390.14, a loss of 14.55 grams. And the oil container with the 20,000 mile oil started out at 411 grams and it now weighs 396.36, a loss of 14.64. So both 10,000 mile oils and the 20,000 mile oil all performed very close to the same. So the base oil is either the same or very similar for all three full synthetics. Before we kick off the lubricity test, let's first go ahead and place the cooked oils in the freezer. Let's go ahead and compare the film strength of the high mileage oil against the 20,000 mile oil. And the watt meter seems very close to the same as it did with the 10,000 mile full synthetic. If there's a lot of wear taking place, I can sometimes hear the difference, but this time the amount of sound seems to be about the same. And the last oil to test for wear resistance is the 20,000 mile oil. And the 20,000 mile oil seems to be performing about the same as the regular full synthetic and the high mileage 10,000 mile oils. Time is up, so let's take a closer look at each of the test pins under a microscope. And the size of the wear scars are almost the same, but the 20,000 mile oil has less than a 1% advantage. Oil is cheap and engines are expensive, but the oil that has the best wear resistance is the 20,000 mile oil. However, it only performed about 1% better than the less expensive high mileage oil and not that much better than the regular full synthetic. For evaporation, of loss, the 10,000 mile high mileage oil barely edges out the 20,000 mile oil at 14.55 grams compared to 14.64. And all three full synthetics perform quite a bit better than the synthetic blend which experienced 17.01 grams of evaporation. Let's see how the heat exposure impacted the cold oil flow of the oils. And the order of the oils is once again the same with the 5,000 mile oil in the left lane and the 20,000 mile all the way to the right. And this time the 10,000 mile full synthetic is the first one out of the gate and the first one on the track but the high mileage oil is in a very close second. Once again, the synthetic blend and the 20,000 mile oils are performing very close to the same rate of speed. And the 10,000 mile oil is once again gaining momentum on the competition. And it's the 10,000 mile full synthetic crossing the finish line first, but the high mileage oil is in a close second. And the 20,000 mile oil just finished in third, barely edging out the synthetic blend. If you want to see the original oil analysis results, I'll leave a link in the video description. Sometimes brand new motor oils have trace levels of aluminum, iron, or other wear metals. However, all four Supertech oils look very good without any wear metals in the new oil samples. Barium, boron, calcium, and magnesium are detergents and dispersants. If you add the totals for each type of detergent and dispersant, the 10,000 mile oil actually has a little bit more than a 20,000 mile oil, but it's very close. So it begs the question, why does a SuperTech 20,000 mile oil receive two extra stars over the 10,000 mile oil for preventing sludge and harmful deposits when it actually has less detergent and dispersant content? The high mileage oil and the 20,000 are almost the same. And all three full synthetics offer about 400 parts per million more detergent dispersant content compared to the 5 thousand mile oil. Anti-wear additives are incredibly important for engine life and performance. And the 20,000 mile oil has a total of 1,639 parts per million. The high mileage oil isn't too far behind at 1,546. The 10,000 mile is at 1,515 and the 5,000 mile oil is at 1,280. So this time Supertech star rating system aligns with the actual oil lab test results. Even though both 10,000 mile oils have a higher viscosity at a high temperature, they also float better when extremely cold. The total base number is the oil's ability to neutralize acids. And the high mileage oil has the best TBN at 6.8 and the 10,000 mile full synthetic 6.7. The 20,000 mile oil's TBN seems a little bit low for an oil that promises to offer better wear protection against sludge than the 10,000 mile oils. Turbocharged engines or engines with gasoline direct injection oftentimes experience fuel contaminated oil, especially during extended oil change intervals of over 10,000 miles. So let's contaminate the 20,000 mile oil with 5% gasoline. Let's see how the fuel contaminated oil performs on the lubricity tester. And the gasoline really thinned out the the motor oil and it's definitely having a negative impact on the oil's performance. And the watt meter is definitely starting out higher compared to the uncontaminated motor oil. So there's definitely more wear taking place. The test pin on the left is for the 20,000 mile oil without fuel contamination and the one on the right is for the fuel contaminated 20,000 mile oil. And the test pin for the fuel contaminated motor oil has a 6% larger wear scar. So the most expensive contaminated oil actually has a larger wear scar compared to the 5,000 mile synthetic blend. So which motor oil is best? And the high mileage 10,000 mile oil came out on top with 
with an average finish of 1.9. However, the 10,000 and 20,000 mile full synthetics finished in a very close second and third place respectively. So is the five quart container of the 20,000 mile oil worth the extra $4 over the full synthetic 10,000 mile oils? In my opinion, the 20,000 mile oil is pretty close to the same as the 10,000 mile oils and I just wouldn't spend the extra money on it. So would I use the SuperTech 20,000 mile oil for 20,000 miles in my vehicle? Absolutely not. In my opinion, that's taking on a lot of risk and there's a good chance it'll cause a lot of wear to the engine. Having said that, I do like the 10 and 20,000 mile oils that SuperTech makes. However, I just wouldn't trust them for more than about five or 6,000 miles. I'd really like to hear your thoughts on extended oil change intervals. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and look forward to next time.